YouTube channel. I'm Rohit. Today we'll talk about a new topic called um, how we can send a REST message or how we can trigger a REST message from the workflow or the flow designer. So let's take an example. You have a REST message already built into that your REST message uh, application. You just need to be triggered that REST message in your flow diagram or maybe in your workflow. So we'll discuss that point today. So without wasting time, let's get started. So today uh, we I am taking a one URL. So this is the endpoint, or a, you can say the URL. And if you hit this endpoint or URL, it will return you a JSON format or JSON file. So this message or this REST message uh, will define into our REST message. So if I change one to two, you can see ID is getting changed. So based on that, the title also getting changed. So this is a endpoint, and definitely it's a get method. Uh, we'll first generate a REST message and then I'll tell you that how we can call that REST message inside the workflow or inside the flow designer. So I'll copy this endpoint first and then go back to the ServiceNow instance. In the ServiceNow instance, I am in right now San Diego release. You can use the lower version also, there is no problem. The process will be remaining same. So what I have to do, I have to go to the REST message here module and inside the REST message module, you can see this is the out of box. Uh, this message and then this is the outbound it means that we can send the data from service now to the third party okay so what we'll do i'll create a rest message here and then put the uh, name and then endpoint so i'll put that uh, uh this is the my endpoint and click save so once we save that this rest message will be created so this is not nothing new but uh, if you don't know just for your information you can define the rest message after defining the rest message uh, definitely by default it will generate a default method which is the get method and this method will actually uh, you can used in your I mean this is the default method okay now this one uh, the last parameter one or two we can change to any value one two three and based on that uh, ID and title will be changed, right? So this is not a static value. It's a dynamic value in that case What we can do we can put a dollar and then we can put any key called ID So this is not a uh, the number is not a static It is a dynamic value and it can change always so I'll click save and submit and now I'll click auto generate variables So it will generate a rest message so now in this rest message we can put some value testing value i'll put for the timing we know that the value is one two three anything we'll put that and click that test message so once we click the test message you can see we are actually receiving the http status is 200 and the response we are receiving for user id and id so this is the one we are getting now the second question or the second uh, biggest question is that uh, if you see here if we click the preview script users we can call this uh, rest message to any of these our UI action business tool or anywhere whatever wherever we need it right we can copy this one and then go back to the workflow and then in the run script we can paste that for that I'll simply create a catalog item and then I will show you that so I'll go to the SCCAD item table so those are, are already aware of that they can skip this part but I'll quickly do that so this is one of the catalog item I'm going to build that and here I'll put the name equal to rest message test and save that this work uh, this catalog item uh, will create one variable that variable will be one two three I mean that variable used for the in, uh, input purpose I'll create that variable quickly so here I'm going to create a variable that variable called uh, single line text and then here I'll put that uh, the question is ID and the name will be obviously ID and order is 100 so this will I just create that uh, the variable so people will uh, put the ID is one or two and based on that we'll generate a rest message and whatever things we want to do we can do that so the, if we try it there will be ID they will put and then order that it will generate it will run the flow design diagram or flow designer and then from there we supposed to uh, call this stress message okay 
So for that, what I'll do, I'll go to the flow uh, um, uh, designer here, and then I'll click that flow designer. So here in this flow designer, what I have to do, I have to design or I have to create a new flow first. I'll click here flow, and then I'll create create that REST message uh, data sent something like that. I'll define that name here, and then uh, I'll click submit. So it will generate, I, it will create a flow for me. So once you click that, uh, you probably seen this, the, you probably will be see this screen. So which will help you to under, take the tool for that uh, flow diagram. I'll skip for that and then I'll click the don't show. Here in the trigger condition, I'll select that service catalog because I am going to use for the service catalog and done. And I'll save that. Now after save this one, uh, what I have to do that, I have to copy this name here uh, and then in this message, I mean this catalog item, I have to set the uh, flow here. Now you can see it, I am getting an error, so saying that invalid reference because this flow is not activated, I have to activate that flow. Now in this actions, you can see there is no action is there. Uh, uh, for the reason probably this activate button is not showing so I'll add the logs for the time being and then activate that so I'll select the log one and say that um, flow start and then activate that so right now you can see this flow is activated and you have a button called deactivated. Now if I go back to the catalog item, I definitely have to, I definitely should see that uh, flow. I have to select that flow and then activate. So right now if I run this or if I order this catalog item, this flow will be triggered. Now the next question will be that how from this flow designer or how this uh, flow designer can pick up this REST message. For that, you have to go back to the home screen and then you have to click here. You have a options call action and data stream. So you have to create a new actions. You cannot directly inject any rest message to your flow diagram. You have to define a flow. Uh, you have to create a actions and then that actions can pick up that, uh, uh, that rest message. Otherwise you can use the data stream. So what is data stream? Data stream is a kind of a um, uh, use for the rest message or soap message which can give you that um, facility of the pagination. What is the pagination and what is the data stream use cases? We will talk in our next sessions. But the, for the time being, we will talk about that how we can uh, use that REST message. So I will create a new action called uh, REST message. And once we create the REST message, you can see, I mean, once you uh, define these actions, you can see that input, error, evolution, output. I'll click plus sign here. So in this uh, actions, you can perform multiple uh, multiple things. You can uh, uh, perform, um, um, you can create a task. You can, it's a kind of steps, uh, multiple steps you can, you can add. So simply, uh, I'll, uh, you can go back here and then click the run script. And inside the run script, whatever the things uh, you, it's generated by preview script users, uh, you can copy that script. So here you can copy that one and then directly you can go back to the flow diagram and paste that. So once you paste that, if you see, this is your input that you are receiving and that input you are passing. So we have to go back to the input and click the create input. And here we'll define that input name called ID. This name we will copy here. And then here I have to create one more variable called, I mean ID. And here in pillar, I have to click that input and then ID. So what actually I did, I created an input called ID and then in the, run, in the run script, I created one parameter here, ID and which is mapping from this uh, input pillar called ID. Now also I get a response body. This response body is somewhere uh, needs to be passed. So what I'll do, I'll create a variable here and then here I'll put that uh, response body okay and then uh, what I'll do in this case I'll put that outputs here I'll do that uh, here uh, <clears throat> outputs 
dot response body equal to response body okay so that's it it's uh, done and then i have to go back to the outputs also i have to create one more output called response body and then uh, i have to click the exit on uh, that one and then here i have to script and then uh, response body so let's revise that whatever we have done so i have created a one inputs that call id and then this is the name of the id and then script i have created one input variable called id and then the steps one the inputs id i am using and this id i have to use in here in the code so i'll put that um, inputs and then id this id is going to use here instead of one and then here whatever output will get that i i have created one script output this output i am assigning from here outputs the response body equal to here and then this response or the script output i am using directly in the output body so let's save that and then we'll test first this action and then we'll inject to the flow designer so we'll click here and we'll pass the id equal to one and then run test and then we'll see that the whatever we are response we are getting actually we are not getting proper responses so if you see here we are not actually getting the actual result that we are expecting uh, basically this result we are not expecting there so why what is the miss here if you see this is the label and this is the name of this output so i will copy that i have to copy and then paste here i should be in that a small case and again um, this value will be copied to uh, i mean this value will copy to here the script output and this script output is actually tightly mapped with this one so let's publish and test one more time i'll go here and once i click here execution you will be able to see that uh, whatever uh, my uh, response we are e expecting that response we are getting but it's coming as a slash n n because we put that uh, json dot screenify here uh, that's not needed we just remove that we'll, we just need to remove that here and publish and now um, if I go back to the flow here, I will use the uh, flow here. So in this uh, here, I will first use that get variable action, get catalog variables. I will select that one. And then here, uh, uh, I will uh, select that from pillar, I will select that requested item. And here in this service catalog template, I have to select the catalog name. So I will push that rest message and here uh, i'll move this id here and done now what i'll do i'll click that uh, i'll uh, pick that rest message here and then this rest message definitely need a id so that id will come from that i this variable id and then uh, in case if you want to update that uh, in your uh, RITM, you can just click that update here method. And then you can select this trigger requested item. And here you can uh, set that comments or work notes you can set as responses so additional comments and you can use the rest message body and then activate so let's go back to that catalog item and try it and see how it is behaving so i'll click uh, quickly try it this catalog item and here i'll put one and then order It will generate a RITM and then it will uh, pick up our flow. So let's open this request. Uh, let's open the RITM.
and if you see in this additional comments this whatever we got from that API we just pasted here so that way you can use the uh, uh, your rest message in your uh, flow diagram um, you can similarly go back to the workflow in the run script you can paste this, this one and then use that so that's it for today uh, in the next video we'll talk about the rest team um, so uh, thank you very much have a great day please like subscribe and share with your community